ready for some fun? Yay! That's it. Yeah. Okay. So, a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, my name is Tom Erba. You can call me Tom if it's uh, easier. And I'm uh, working for uh, SafeBridge as a VP of Security Research. And SafeBridge presented seven times at Black Hat USA in the last five years, and a total of nine Black Hat USA talks. I've been around in, like in the last 20 years. And uh, my main focus is on APT research and vulnerability research. I also presented at uh, global conferences, such as uh, Black Hat and DEF CON in the last three, and qualified to Black Hat this year as well. So what we are going to speak today, I have 200 slides in this research. We won't go about any, all of them, but uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm flexible. So if something is more interesting, I can change. I have everything here. So I chose to speak uh, more about uh, um, operation security mistake done by nation state uh, APT, because I think it's more interesting than uh, the criminals ones but uh, I will have example of both. So let's begin. Uh, so the research state of mind is focused on understanding the adversary. Uh, and when you understand your enemy, uh, you can win the mind game. You can understand their plans, their motive, their tactics, their techniques. Uh, so when a breach happens, you usually focus on, on, on the IR, in the incident response, in our enterprise, right? On our backyards. But think about what you can learn from investigating the other side. Of course, only in legal manners, right? But all the things I've done here are all, all legal, and I will show you how easy it is. So every research start with uh, assumptions and the most uh, important assumptions uh, is the first one uh, attackers are humans so most of the people uh, they perceive uh, hackers like from the hollywood movies you know they tapping the the password the first time they don't uh, succeed and the, the third time they succeed you know they are genius uh, and they don't do any mistakes but uh, i had an assumption that they are only humans and they will do mistakes uh, the second one was uh, that uh, threat actors are lazy, most of them, and they don't necessarily fix OOPSEC mistake, uh, even if it is being publicly disclosed. And uh, the third one we already talked about, that we can learn a lot uh, by investigating uh, those mistakes. So uh, before I started, I started to think about how to measure uh, the OOPSEC uh, mistakes of each threat actor because I knew that I want to do it in large scale on a lot of threat actors from all around the world. Uh, so I developed the OOPSEC meter and uh, you can get until 100 bad points. You have 10 categories, each category can give you 10 bad points and you don't want to get 100 if in, that, in that case. Uh, so for example, if I as a researcher can understand from operation security mistake uh, the victim heat map uh, fully, uh, they will get 10 bad points. Uh, if I can uh, do attribution, I know the exact people's names, addresses, and so on, it will be uh, 10 bad points, and, and so on. If I only know the IP or the or country or region, it won't be 10 points. So uh, let's begin. Uh, our first uh, threat actor is located in the Gaza Strip. Uh, it has been active uh, for more than 10 years, and it's attacking both Windows and Android targets. So in 2017, it was first discovered, and the threat actor uh, has uh, self-developed a web panel, uh, which is not a good idea to develop your own, uh, but with two-factor authentication login, it seems very good. But the problem was that navigating directly to the inner pages uh, resulted in full access uh, to the system uh, with no authentication required. And on the right, you can see the exfiltrated keylogs of the victim. It's blurry uh, by purpose. So quantum leap to 2023, and the actor is still active. It's masquerading as a Google uh, Play app. And the malware was uh, uploaded from Gaza, as you can see, uh, by one of the victims, maybe, or by the attackers for te testing purposes. So sometimes they do it. 
don't do it. And the certificate was also signed in Gaza, so we have a good uh, uh, feeling that it's, it's originated from there. And the malware has plenty of collection, uh, collection capabilities, SMS, call logs, contacts, record audio, and much more. And the interesting thing is that the exfiltration is done via HTTP post request. So uh, I started to think, OK, what will happen if I will do a GET request instead of a POST request? And when I sent just, just the same request, but in a GET method, I got the DB password. You know, oh. <laughs> what, 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 what's that? Th that can be happening, right? Uh, and this is not uh, a self-developed uh, backend. This is a very common uh, backend uh, system called Laravel. Uh, and if it's, if it's misconfigured, you get the DB password. So I asked myself if it's just a one-time mistake, and I checked all of the city server, and all are vulnerable to the same uh, OOPSEC mistake. And uh, this is actually the Windows-based uh, victim database, and it's the real password. Uh, so on 2017, uh, they used the first stage malware code, uh, downloaded, uh, which downloads the second step malware, and the name was uh, three times the let letter D, DDD, uh, from the C2 server. And the C2 server name was pal4u.net. And it was published, and five, six years like passed, and, and now they are using a subdomain. They even didn't bother to replace the domain. How much it costs a domain? One dollar, two dollar, three, four, five. They didn't even bother to do that. So now they're using a subdomain which called app.pal4u.net. And uh, this time they are using the directory instead of DDD, CCC. Okay, so it was very hard to guess that they are using this uh, directory. And if you can see on the right, if you just surf there by browsing, you will get, because it's misconfigured and it's open here, you can see a list of all the f files. And the files are all the victims' exfiltrated data. Okay, sorted by date, so uh, it will be easy to download, right? And it's also in a zip file, so you can download it. Um, so I, I was able to map almost 8,000 victims. Most of them are in the Gaza Strip, but others in uh, other Middle Eastern countries. and. Uh, the amount of data was huge, almost uh, 500 uh, compressed megabytes a day. That's the average size. So for my estimation, the total size of uh, exfiltrated data is between 2 tera to 3 terabytes uh, of data. Uh, and uh, another OOPSEC mistake uh, that uh, we already seen uh, they are doing, they are doing it uh, a lot. So other uh, C2 servers are also open here. So uh, you can see the, the code of the C2. Uh, and then I just uh, used uh, virus total graph to expand uh, a little more. You can see that there are a lot of C2s, and one of them, uh, I think the name is Tawaji, I don't know if I'm spelling it right, but uh, that was the name of the domain as well. They had a double mistake, not only that it was open there, uh, I, I think that uh, for convenience they just compressed all of the backend code, they upload it to the server and extract the, co the code, but they did not delete the compressed data. So usually you cannot download by browsing a PHP code or backend code, but when it's zipped, you can do it. And then I got all of their uh, C2 server backend. And I can uh, see if they're doing uh, other mistake as well. Uh, so uh, I publish all of uh, that. Uh, and actually, uh, I found out that uh, they are still active. Uh, I published it first on DEF CON last year, on August, and uh, very quickly they, they, they reacted. So this, I think this is one the, one, the things that uh, are the most interesting for me, because I, I like the mind games. So they are doing a move, and I am doing my move. So especially for this talk, uh, I tried to uh, see what, 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 what they did. So uh, three weeks after DEF CON, uh, in, in August or September, they replaced the subdomain uh, from up pal for you to i to c pal for you. Okay, they moved the server uh, from Gaza to Amsterdam. The IP was changed, but when I tried the same uh, APIs, they for for example types, I get all the types that the server support to be exfiltrated. Uh, so I knew, so I understood that the server is still active. 
And when I uh, tried an HTTP post to the key uh, URL, uh, when I supply the a Mac, which I, which is like uh, the I think the shorten of machine ID and the app ID parameter, I will get key successfully. But what happened if I don't send those parameters? Again, I have uh, the Laravel code helping me, giving me a stack trace of what was getting wrong. And guess what? It was in the keylogger function, uh, the mistake. OK, so we know they are still using the keylogger. And when sending uh, an invalid app ID, so they expect uh, integer, but if you send a string instead, you get uh, actually the MySQL uh, database table of phones. And the phones are all the victim phones, and you have all of the fields. So th th then I stopped, because I didn't want to do something that uh, is not legal. But potentially, uh, you can uh, get all of, all of the data again. OK, so uh, they fixed the CCC directory. I cannot download the file because I cannot s see uh, the open there. Uh, OK, so I tried both by IP and by domain name, and I, I couldn't get I got a 404 and could not get it. But did they really fix the mistake or just fix the open there mistake? So I tried to guess the name of the uh, the exfiltration f uh, files, and it was very easy uh, to to download all of them. So you can see that I downloaded it like last month, and also did it here this morning at 5 a.m. Uh, so you can do it as well, and you will get all all, all of the data. Uh, they even didn't bother to replace the encryption password. How how complex is it to re replace a password, right? So I was able. Uh, to uh, use, uh, I brute force it before, I now I can uh, brute force it again, and uh, I have all of the data in clear text. Okay, so what, what do you think about them? What what should be their their score? You can shout. No one. Okay, I gave them uh, 47 bad points, so it's like in the middle uh, score uh, because they did. Uh, a lot of mistake. I know their heat maps. I know uh, the uh, little bit part of uh, the attribution, uh, and so on. Okay, l let's continue to another uh, threat actor. So, uh, Moses Staff is uh, Iranian. Uh, some some say it's a Palestinian threat actor, uh, which uh, carries out targeted attacks against Israeli companies, and they are leaking their data and encrypts their networks. But there is no. Uh, ransom demand at all. So um, it's uh, it's political. It's not like uh, a regular ransomware. Uh, it's more like a wiper. So uh, we can see that they have uh, uh, they have rich infrastructure, as you can see, and uh, tools arsenal. And Cyber Reason uh, first discovered them uh, on February last year, and they are using a tool called uh, Strife Water Rat, and uh, this threat exfiltrated uh, victim data to an R-coded uh, IP address. So I was curious. I read this article and, and I thought, OK, this is a good opportunity. Let's see what's there in this IP. So I download the uh, pickup file, the, um, the sniffing uh, file uh, from, of uh, this threat from uh, VirusTotal. And uh, just look at it. It's on, on, the, on the left. And I saw a post parameter sent to a page called index8.php. So they are, you have a token, you have a TID, you have a, a API data, uh, and then the file name content. And is it it's strange? Why, why do you call a file index8.php? Why is it not index.php? OK, so the, the next thing I've, I've done is searching for other indexes, right? Uh, you will do it too. So index10. Uh, so, I found it, and actually it, they, they left a lot of leftovers uh, over. You can see it. Uh, you can see it on the right because uh, they develop something. They testing it. This is the real production C2 server, but they forgot to remove the leftovers, right? So I can use this button to upload the file to their server. So I didn't want to do, to upload the web shell, uh, but I upload the file, and you can see that uh, it's written. Save bridge, don't do it again. You know, uh, um, uh, so it's like a proof of concept that I can uh, upload the file to the, to their server. I only use the text file, and also I also found in, uh, index nine, 
which displayed the last IP connected of the victim and obfuscated a byte array. Uh, and those left over uh, on the OC2 server uh, are predict and using predictable uh, backend URLs could be uh, used against them. Um, because uh, what will happen if, again, I will use get HTTP instead of a post? So I did it. And now we got a, a URL to array.txt. And we also know that this is an Nginx uh, server. And when we uh, surf by the browser to the array.txt, uh, uh, we get logs of the victim's connections and uh, a lot more. So uh, if you are an hacker, don't leave leftovers on your production servers. Uh, another threat actor is an uh, Iranian uh, threat actor. Uh, seems like nation state, but I cannot say for sure. Uh, I discovered it in late uh, 2021. And uh, they used, uh, at that time, there was an MSHTML uh, zero-day vulnerability, and they were very quick. So when this exploit was uh, uh, released, like two days later, they started uh, attacking people with it and hoping that uh, those uh, victims won't be able to uh, install the patch in time. So they uh, infecting Farsi speaking uh, victims with uh, a tool I called uh, and named PowerShell Shell because it was very short PowerShell script, but it was very powerful and they collect a lot of data uh, from their victims. And they're using phishing campaigns uh, and also collecting Gmail and Instagram credentials. So. Uh, they also did the same mistake of uh, OpenDeer and compressed uh, archives. So I download uh, the code. Uh, here, here is the code. And when I analyze it, I found a theoretical exploitation vector. Uh, it's based now on ASPX, so it's Microsoft and not uh, PHP. And uh, because they are uh, using a, a vulnerable function and they don't limit the by whitelist or even a blacklist the file types that uh, the malware can upload to the server. So you can just uh, theoretically send a, a web shell uh, via HTTP and also execute it via HTTP because uh, you know you, you control the content, you control where it will be written, and uh, there is a directory traversal vulnerability there. Uh, so uh, this is very, very, very vulnerable. Uh, the, the other part, the, the phishing part, uh, they store a uh, stolen credential in clear text. So this is not good, and they store it in a file called out.txt in the root folder of the web server. So if you know the name out.txt, you get all of the credentials uh, of all, all the users. Uh, they also have more complex phishing. They actually were able to bypass uh, Apple uh, um, two-factor authentication. Uh, they did it by uh, automating uh, browser automation uh, of the uh, filling of the password and the OTP. Because when you get uh, uh, when you have a MFA, you get a token and write, and it, it's only valid for like I don't know short time, like five minutes or so. Uh, so. Uh, think about they are, they are in a different time zone, the victim are different time zones, it can be in the middle of the night, how could they be uh, quick enough? So they, they develop a code that uh, uh, when, when, the, uh, when people uh, are, uh, they, they get the phishing, they, they click on the link, and then uh, when they uh, reach the server, the server automatically uh, do a browser automation uh, uh, using Selenium, if you know this uh, to, uh, this uh, uh, mechanism, and they are able to uh, get the OTP, type it automatically, and then go uh, into uh, uh, their uh, victims' uh, phones uh, in the cloud and get access to it uh, very easily. So uh, I reported to Apple, and uh, um, they say use MFA. So it's MFA bypass. MFA won't work, uh, and also say don't fall into phishing. Uh, and uh, another threat actor, Kitten. Uh, actually, Checkpoint uh, found it uh, and discovered it for the first time. Uh, I did a parallel research and uh, found some other stuff in, in the same time. Uh, so they are Iranian threat actor, uh, also nation state. 
they are focusing on phishing uh, Telegram credentials of uh, Target, which uh, the Iranian Islamic regime sees, sees, sees them as a threat. And actually they are using, uh, it's, it's a little bit, a bit rare, the, they are using a malware that exfiltrates data over FTP, like file transfer, and file transfer are clear text, and they embed the username and password of the account in the malware, so if you reverse engineer it, you have the username and the password, but that's not the, the big mistake. The big mistake was that the uh, incoming FTP directory was placed under the web root of the HTTP server on the Cito server. So potentially, it means that you can upload a web shell via the FTP and execute the code via surfing to it uh, by the browser. So uh, not a very good uh, OOPSEC uh, uh, architecture. And also found that uh, this threat actor also uh, exfiltrated data also in clear text to a downloadable location. Uh, you can see the step it's a little bit small, but the step of the, the, the phishing, first they get the telegram code, then the password, and the name, and, and so on, so on, like four or five steps. And um, uh, they, they made they did a lot of mistakes. Uh, their, also, their code was downloadable. So I download the code, I think it was .NET, I uh, decompile it, and got the email address of the attackers and their credentials. Uh, it's, uh, I, I don't show it right now because I don't want people to, to attack them, but uh, um, uh, we, you, you have it all because they are exfiltrating the data also to these uh, Gmail addresses. Okay, are you good? Okay, uh, so let's speak a little bit about the Chinese APT group. Um, actually, uh, Sharp Panda targets uh, Southeast Asian governments. And uh, they actually used a very old office uh, exploit, but it's very common, uh, this exploit. And it connects to a C2 server. You can see like, the, on, on the bottom the, the, the URL of the, of the C2 server uh, inside this uh, um, zip file, which, which actually is an office file. Uh, and at June uh, 2021, Checkpoint uh, also found that uh, the C2 server uh, back then was misconfigured uh, with OpenDIR and that the main .php file wrote the Vixen data to a clear text file called log.txt. Log so you can see the same mistake done by different threat actors. Uh, with, I, I think they didn't talk with each other, right? Uh, so what I found is that uh, uh, six months later, on January 2022, uh, the OpenDIR uh, is uh, is not fixed because it's still written to the same uh, file log.txt, although it was published and Checkpoint are very good at marketing, so it's got all, all of the media and uh, I, I'm sure that they heard about it and they even didn't replace the uh, encrypted uh, RC4 uh, passphrase. And can you guess what was the passphrase? One to six. Uh, that's, that's nation state uh, APT Chinese uh, Detector, right? Uh, okay, now I'm going to speak a little bit um, deeper into the most uh, uh, secure uh, APT campaign I ever saw. Uh, and I also spoke and uh, consulted with a lot of other researchers, uh, and I do it for, for 20 years, and they d told me that they didn't see something similar. So I think it's, it's uh, it's it's a, a good example to see the the, the good the good part of how, how you can do stuff. So the campaign is called uh, the or the threat actor is called Infi. That's their own name for for the campaign, and they are probably mo the most persistent Iranian APT group ever discovered. Uh, the first campaign start started like more than 15 years ago, and they are still active. Uh, the victims are also individual and organization. Uh, and there were hundreds of victims in 35 countries, 30% uh, of them in Iran itself. And actually, I was uh, had the opportunity to sync all uh, their uh, entire infrastructure. Uh, as you can see on the right, all of their victims uh, start to speak to an Israeli server in my house uh, instead of the Cito server uh, in Europe. And uh, they lost everything. They, they walk like almost eight years 
it was very targeted attack and they lost in one day they lost everything so in i published it in 2016 i think and two months later uh, parallel research made by colin anderson uh in was uh, introduced in black hat uh, uh, this year that year and they were able to uh prove that uh, the iranian uh, responded in a manner that only a nation state uh, can do uh, they just uh, manipulate the traffic in the central iranian network company uh, and redirect uh, all of the sync called uh, iranian uh, uh, victims uh, to the to a new new, new city server so they were able to uh, at least save the iranian based victims but they lost all of the others so i, I think that they don't like don't like me but uh, the lesson was learned very well and the Iranian are very smart and after th this takedown uh, they analyzed their failures and they came back in 2017 with a much secure OPSEC infrastructure first they uh, used a two-step uh, infection process uh, they the name of the the malware th their own names were like French uh, I don't speak French but I think they call it Fowder uh, which is uh, uh, Thunder and uh, uh, the, so the first stage is just uh, like uh, uh, getting environmental di data uh, to understand if this is the right victim and if the victim uh, computer is interesting because there are some victims that don't use the computer to store stuff that interests th them. But if if it's all right and they are, they are interested in, in this machine, they installed a toner, which is Thunder. Uh, and the uh, thunder comes after the lightning so there is a good story after that uh, about that and you can see that this is a very advanced tool it's fully undetectable in 2018 so one year after they use it it was still uh, zero detection at virus total and uh, there are a lot of capabilities so if my computer was uh, infected they can hear what we speak today and a lot of pr print capture audio recordings and uh, they support both HTTP and FTP exfiltration and, and they are doing a, a very good job but the most interesting thing for me uh, were the anti-takedown uh, measures that they took so the first one is pretty common I'm sure most of you uh, heard about it. It's called DGA uh, for Domain Generation Algorithm. So instead of using hard-coded IPs or URLs like they did in the first infi, uh, they, they are generating by computer, by algorithm, uh, 100 domain names each week. And they are doing it based on an algorithm, I wrote it down, uh, which is dependent on, the, on, on time. So each each week the time is changed and uh, a new uh, domain is ge generated 100 a day a week sorry um, and think about uh, cases where your uh, your time in the computer is or the victim time in the computer is not correct so it's not uh, accurate so they will get a different uh, domain name uh, as a calculation so in order to uh, tackle that they are downloading uh, the right date from uh, RSS feeds of worldwide news, news sites that we all, we all use, and that, the, the, that way they can trust the, the time. But the, the, the second the anti-takedown, it, it's what makes it uh, rare, I think. And I'd like to hear more later, uh, I will be here, if you heard about something uh, in other campaigns that do it, uh, but I personally don't know. Uh, they did, uh, uh, they implemented an RSA uh, public key verification uh, where the uh, server, the, the, the malware does not trust the C2 server. So it says, okay, prove me that you are a legit C2 server. And if you are, don't have the uh, signature file signed with the private key, and only they have the private key, uh, the malware will download the signature file, will decrypt it with the public key embedded in the malware, and if it's not right, uh, it, it was said, okay, this is not improved, uh, uh, approved uh, C2 server, uh, and move to the next one. Uh, so I uh, reverse engineered the DGA. I can forecast the domain names that the malware will connect next week, in a month, in a year. I know, I know that. So I purchase the domain. 
okay, and uh, I then then the malwares were uh, c contacting me, but because I didn't had the private key and I didn't c I could not generate uh, the signature file when it, it connect to me, I only had the IP of the victim, but then it moved to another uh, C2 server. So first, I purchased all of the domains I can afford. It cost me money, but uh, th that way they could not speak with their victims, but it's 100 a week. I couldn't do it for a long time. So I tried to uh, find different approaches to, to attack them. So, uh, and they are, they are very smart because they are implement implementing it in every process that the malware is doing, not, not just the exfiltration. So they also have FTP uh, commands and every process that uh, connects to the internet, they, they are using this uh, algorithm. So I could not find any way to attack it. So this implication of very strong OPSEC security uh, made us like uh, it, it was useless. Syncall is not useful uh, due to the C2 verification. They're using asymmetric encryption over the, date, the, the, the exfiltrated data itself. So even if you uh, somehow manage to get the files, they are all encrypted with asymmetric key, so you cannot decrypt them. Uh, and so I can only collect victims' IP to have a, 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 a victim heat maps uh, and uh, nothing else. Maybe to publish their uh, algorithm and some AV will uh, will uh, block them. Actually, a, a funny thing that uh, Colin Anderson uh, presented at Blackhead is that some of the AVs, I won't name, it, name them, but you, you can find it in Blackhead's site, the, the presentation, uh, they, uh, they, they, they detect something fishy and they block one of their C2 server. So the hackers are so bold, they wrote uh, in the blog post of, uh, it's like uh, internet facing, they wrote, oh dear vendor, you blocked my, uh, my server by mistake. This is our all legit servers and the vendor released it. So they continue to, to attack with this uh, C2. Um, so during 2017 and 2021, there were several publications about new Fowder version, new, new toner version, by myself and by other be defender, uh, Chinese companies, and, and, and etc. But we could not actually, besides knowing what they are doing, uh, we didn't have the ability to stop them or to try to uh, do a, a second sync call or something like that. So, but recently, uh, I found the weakest link because there is always a weakest link. Uh, it's like a life mission for me. I'm tracking them since like in the last, last eight years. And the, the, this time the weakest link was the transmission of uh, the exfiltrated files from the C2 server in Europe to the attacker machines in Iran. So I found out that the C2 server, uh, which is a VPS only, uh, used by Infi also contains two uh, backend domains which are not part of Fowder and Toner DGA. So it's a little bit small, but the, 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 the generated the domain names, usually uh, they don't have any meanings, like 4G, 3S, so something like this, right? Because it's computer generated. But then I found two other domains that called log1host and f1host. And I looked at the malware and I could not find uh, th those domains because they, they were not R coded in the, in the code. So it made me think, what are those domains? And uh, probably uh, F1 is like for files exfiltration, it's toner, and log is like the environment uh, data. So, uh, but I was not sure, I, uh, I, I didn't add the final version of, uh, of this uh, malware, I only had version 11, and I knew that in time, they will have different versions, so maybe those versions include uh, these domains. So I was able to guess uh, the name of the file hosting on the C2 server. Tony was hosting on the C2 server because it's a second stage malware and it, it was downloaded and executed by the first uh, stage folder. So I was able to download it, reverse engineer it, found it like version 15, and it also didn't have the, those two domains. And when I uh, started to, to look, I found that they are using 
PHP backend script that they developed by their own. They call it fdir.php. It was protected by a password, but it was a very guessable password. And the script provides ability to do a dir list of, the, of a specific directory of the exfiltrated files and ability to delete those files. So I developed a script uh, that automatically downloads any file that uh, 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 the Iranian are exfiltrating. Uh, and I was, I, I, I was able for four months to download all of the uh, victim's data, but you remember, it's encrypted. I cannot do anything without it. But a closer look into uh, this encryption uh, also found that there is a highly obfuscated metadata, and uh, that's helped me to understand only in, in the toner version, in the second step. The first step, they didn't use the metadata. Uh, and uh, I was able, actually, uh, to understand uh, some, some understanding of which are the victims. So actually, I made this slide. I didn't know I w I'm going to speak that. It's like a, like a year ago. Uh, and you can see that we, I have the host name. I have the folder name that will be uh, the, the folder name in the C2 server. Uh, the toner version, you can see 16. Uh, I don't have this version. I have only version 15. The uh, GUID, the machine GUID of the machine and uh, the IP address, and actually it's a server in, uh, in Sweden. Um, it's hosting both FTP and HTTP uh, services. If someone from the government is interested, I will be here, but show me a badge. Uh, I, I reported it to the Interpol, I reported it to other security agencies. No, re no response. Um, the other thing that was actually funny, I think, uh, for my opinion, is that the attacker machine in Iran, they used it for testing. Uh, so they infect themselves, and I got their uh, files, you know, uh, at least the file names, uh, from, from, their, um, from the machines in, in Iran. So uh, one of the file names, uh, I'm sure I'm not going to say it right, it's called Mullah Jun Sarbazi, and he's an opposi oppositional leader to Iranic Islamic regime, uh, and it was probably, uh, his identity was probably used as a lure team to infect other oppositioners. Uh, so it, it was very interesting, the, the, the computer name was named Test2, so I understand that it's the testing machines of the, the attackers. Uh, also, we had like uh, human rights uh, victims uh, all around the world uh, that they are targeting. Um, I will skip that, so we'll have enough time. Uh, to conclude, the they are still active. Uh, after my DEF CON talk, uh, a few days later, uh, they uh, upload uh, a delete command for almost all of the victims. Uh, so I had I have this delete command and, and uh, actually just uh, close the process, use SFX, uh, self-executable, uh, to, uh, um, to shut down the processes and kill, kill a folder and toner. But there were uh, other victims that were not killed and moved to a different server. Uh, I am tracking this server, and when I have something to update, uh, I will update. Um, okay, so enough about uh, nation state. Let's uh, look at some uh, cyber crime. Uh, how much time do I have? 20 minutes? Ah, plenty, great. So, like, this is slide number, I don't know, uh, 57. So, we have much more. <laughs> yeah, 187. There are five minutes, okay. So, uh, uh, now I, I want to touch on different angle, the, the uh, cyber crime in Iran. So, uh, there, there is a plenty of cyber crime in, in Iran, again, Iranians. And they are using five steps, uh, infection process, in order to get your credit card, and I will explain it. Uh, so, on the left, it's a partial list of uh, CITO server that were alive at the time of the check. It was like middle of January 2022, sorry. One of them uh, stores the entire code on a zip file. You, we already see it, so also cyber criminal do the same mistake as uh, nation state. And I download it uh, and analyze it. And the victims are found in different second-hand online market sites. So it's called divar.ir, 
And when you have something you want to sell, your car, I don't know, something else, you, you publish an uh, 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 advertisement there with your phone number and say, I want to sell that thing or that. And they, are, they have a, a Python script with an API that just crawl all of the advertisement and extract the phone numbers okay, of the victims. That's, that's the first step. And the script on the right send them a, tele a threat phishing text message uh, via Telegram. Uh, this, is th this is very funny. So I tried to uh, play a little bit with it. And the full victim list is textual and downloadable. And the phone numbers are available in the users.lst file. Uh, but m much more funny is that even the bash history of the Linux server is exposed. Uh, and you can see all of the commands they manually type, the hackers, on the C2 server. So, what, what the heck? Uh, it, it was very funny. Uh, and I found plenty of uh, smishing lures, uh, threat to be arrested in 72 hours if you don't pay, COVID-19 payments, even dating sites. And trust me, when a victim uh, get, get threatened in, in Iran that he will be arrested, you are going to pay, right? You're not taking the chance. And the sites were also open here. Uh, so uh, I have access to it. And the payment, uh, allegedly, and the small, small payments, can only be done via an Android app. I don't know if you can see it uh, on the bottom left. Uh, so this is the only way to pay. So when you actually uh, uh, run this, it's a malware, and it's a SMS spy, and they, it will exfiltrate all of your SMSs. So that's how they uh, bypass the two-factor authentication, because they have your password, they have your SMSs, so they have everything, right? So they are clever. I decompiled the Android malware, and we can see that uh, the resource files hold the phishing uh, IP. Uh, and when I uh, uh, went there, I saw that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a phishing site. We'll see it in, in a minute. Uh, this is the PHP page that uh, uploads the victim SMS message. And they are using a fixed name for the file to store all of the SMSs. And it's called lydiateam.txt. Please remember it for the next four minutes, uh, three. Uh, we can also see uh, the, the incoming SMSs. And actually, they are very persistent uh, because some, some, some victim, they sent them 60 messages until they infect them. So uh, a lot of messages. And this is the fake payment site. Uh, it's masquerading as the, the legit site. So it's very confusing because uh, you can see that the, uh, on the top, it's just an image. So, uh, uh, so, sorry, on the top, it's the, the, it's the IP of the C2 server. And just below it, you can see uh, the, the, real, uh, the real C2, sorry, an image of the fake uh, uh, server. So the people look at the white uh, area and say, OK, I know this site. It's a legit site. But actually, it's not. It's like the, the IP on black. Uh, so when you type your uh, uh, credit card details, they also get your credit card, and uh, this is how uh, it looks like. And they, they have a typing there, uh, uh, typing mistake, uh, and they're not spelling right new card, new card received. So remember it. I will use it uh, in, in a minute. And this is the uh, exfiltration of the user credential backend code. Uh, so I started to query the Telegram group that they are using. And uh, both using uh, API, and I, I, I found that they are using three different groups. One group is called SMS, one group is called Data, and, one, and the other called Card. So I think it's self-explanatory what, uh, what's it, the purpose of those groups. But uh, the Telegram group were misconfigured to display all group members and hackers uh, without even uh, joining the group. So it was very helpful for me. And the SMS and data groups are not private. All members are administrators, so very welcoming. Uh, and I didn't have access to the message themselves, but I keep uh, uh, trying. And I joined with my real name. So I'm Israeli. My name is Tomer Bar, very Israeli. They are Iranian hackers, and they let me in. And I stayed as one of the hackers for months. And the credit card group was not private, but all the data was access accessible uh, via the Telegram bot API function, get updates. 
Uh, and then I found the so good Telegram group, and that's their name, and it was very good because I uh, was able to download all the messages. Uh, uh, I will see. I will sh show it in a minute. And play, pay attention to the name of the, the user, the hacker. It's called Baba Zoro. And uh, you can see on the left their uh, Telegram uh, texting, the user's uh, credit cards, uh, even voice messages between the hackers themselves and files of the backend uh, C2 server and malwares as well. Uh, and a deeper analysis revealed massive acti activity, hundreds of malware and C2 server. So I thought, okay, this is just like 10 persons. How, how do they manage to do so much uh, work? Uh, so, so much attacks, and uh, I found out that those groups were just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so I just Google and got uh, a message about, if you remember, Lydia team, uh, uh, and I found that, I found that they they are exfiltrating data here, and uh, the user who is active uh, in this uh, professor phishing group is called Lydia team, if you remember from uh, before. It has 15,000 members, and searching for the typo that I spoke before, new card received in Google, I got actually indexed uh, re result of a credit card. And uh, that, uh, that's, that's funny, but it's uh, g uh, w uh, directed me to the Zalem Fishing Group, which Z Baba Zoro is their admin, and you have 30,000 members. So it seems like the head of the pyramid, uh, but I needed the, I, do we have two more minutes? Okay, sorry. And I found a lot of Iranian fishing groups uh, from two people until 80,000 people. But the most interesting uh, groups were the, the, the one with uh, not a lot of people because the, the, those was the hackers themselves. The other groups they used to sell their uh, exfiltrated data, the credit cards, tools, uh, training, and, and et cetera. Uh, so I sent, uh, uh, I, I was able to join 100% of those groups uh, with my real name, except one that require manual uh, 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 approval. So I said, okay, let's try it. I sent them a request and they approved me. So I have 100%. <laughs> okay, decompiling the malware. Uh, so you can see Lydia.txt. I'm running because I'm running off time. And they did another OPSEC mistake. The, usually uh, the C2 server, uh, is, is doing a randomization in order to uh, not to reveal uh, to someone who wants uh, to attack this, this, this site where the file will be stored. So usually it's like adding date, time, uh, some random letters, and so on. But I found out that they did the randomization on the malware side. So I guess that if they are doing it on the malware side, they are not doing it on the C2 server side. So it's just five letters. I just brute forced and got all of their uh, exfiltrated files. I will skip it. I will end with attribution. So uh, one of the attacker uh, is called Amin Ranjobar. He's testing his malware on his own machine. Uh, of course, why not? And, and one of the SMSs is from a hosting provider uh, confirming his newly registered domain, Sana Iran XYZ, which I checked and it was a C2 server. So I know that is part of the hackers. And here we can see the attacker's account number in the National Bank of Iran and his phone number and full address if you want to visit. Uh, and it's also, he also offers... <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's also offer hacking services using the same phone number. So we have a cross, it's like, uh, it's real. Uh, uh, and I, I will just ending my talk. It, at the end, I will summarize. They are using it like uh, phishing as a service. They uh, have a model that they will get 20% of the income, uh, so one out of five stolen credit cards, and they just sell uh, a lot, a lot of uh, phishing uh, uh, kits, and a lot of people use it, and they get richer and richer, and I will end my talk right now. Thank you. So, thank you so much for a really awesome presentation. Um, we won't do questions now, but find Tom. He will, he will give you more input, so just find him during the day. Yeah. So we will not take a short break now, we will just continue with Dan, with a new computer. We hope it works. 
Um, and then we will do some uh, break after that with some thick and stuff. So don't go anywhere. <laughs>